Ivan Nesterenko from Written.com and I'm joined today by Dino Dogan, founder of Triber and a successful blogger. Uh, why don't you share your advice on how to build a successful community? Yes. Uh, so building a successful community around a product, it's, it's a really interesting challenge. Uh, and there's a bunch of different ways you can slice this and a bunch of different ways to approach it. Um, but if I had to kind of summarize it, it would be um, two things. It starts obviously with the product, and if the product is solving a real problem, and if it's doing it effectively, and if it's, um, uh, you know, solving a real problem effectively and efficiently, you, you just won a huge battle. That's a tremendous uh, foundation to build a community from, right? Um, and then, Understanding what the product and uh, values of the community uh, actually are, like kind of deep values, if you will. So to give you an example, uh, Triber is all about collaboration and reciprocity, these deep human drives. So uh, you can build content for the community that reflects those values. And I think that's a great way to sort of band the community together and share in a culture. Um, and you're going to make mistakes. You're going to make a lot of mistakes, uh, and your community, especially if they love you, especially if they're dedicated to you, they're going to yell at you, right? They're going to tell you, you suck, right? And then that's an opportunity for you to listen, to solve their problem, and, you know, Triber is a small operation. Uh, we're Resources-wise, we're very stretched, uh, so we've made a ton of mistakes, and those mistakes actually helped us build a successful community um, because every complaint is um, an opportunity to do what's right to fix it and to to provide excellent customer service which is something that people don't expect anymore right mm -hmm. so so those are some of the fundamentals that uh, if you focus on that you'll do well they say there are certain topics you should avoid when communicating with your audience like politics and religion do you agree with that yeah, so uh, do you avoid talking about politics and religion? So I did a session earlier, um, it's called Insane Loyalty, How to Get People Fanatically Addicted to You, and I didn't avoid those topics. Uh, you know, I, I, we talked about religion and, and politics and a bunch of other stuff that's not usually discussed in polite company. Uh, it's a toughie, I think it's a personal choice, I, I think it's a deeply personal choice. Um, uh, it can work. It can work for you really well. Uh, Chick-fil-A, right? The CEO was uh, sharing his views on politics. And yeah, a lot of people got pissed off about it. But at the same time, uh, the turnout the next day and the week later and whatever to Chick-fil-A was gangbusters, right? So common sense says, shut up. Don't talk about that stuff. Um, but I don't think it's, uh, it's all that bad. I do it. I'm not saying it's for everybody. But uh, clearly there's, uh, there's ways to do it, and when you do it, even if it backfires, it doesn't, you know, destroy you and it can even help you, yeah. What type of content is best to create to build a community? Yeah, so uh, your community is going to ask you a bunch of questions, so your content can just reflect that. It doesn't have to be like deep rocket science or anything like that. Um, they have a problem, they don't know how to use a feature, you write content that explains how to use that feature uh, or why that feature exists, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then going back to sharing values, common values of the community, that's really important because it helps with the culture. Um, uh, highlighting people in your community. Right, because there's all in every community. There's going to be different players who fill different roles. Some are going to be jesters. Some are going to be example setters. Some are go some are going to be do -good gooders. Some are going to be you know helpers. It doesn't matter, right? So whichever behavior you want to emphasize, whichever uh, behavior you want to imbue your community with, you highlight those people that are doing those things. So and that's a win-win-win. I mean, it's it's great content. It it's a way to thank those who are doing the right thing. It's a great way to uh, build a community. So I think that would be uh, another way to do it. Why is it so important to find the biggest pain of your customers? And how do you actually do that? Ah, excellent question. So finding the biggest pain for your customer, um, it starts with really knowing and understanding your cu customer. Um, and we can go to so many amazing products that have been uh, uh, you know, built over the 
human history, and you're always going to find a person that had this deep pain and often that person went and produced a product that solved that pain. So Rick uh, Blog World uh, NMX CEO, founder of Blog World, in his keynote this morning, he was saying in 2006, as a blogger, he wanted to go to a blogging conference and he tried to find one and it didn't exist, so he made one, right? So um, um, Akiro going to butcher his last name, so I'm not going to say it. The CEO of Sony in the 80s, right? Um, Sony came out with Walkman, right? right? You know, Steve Jobs gets so much credit for inventing an iPod, the MP3 player, right? But that's like an incremental step in technology, right? That's all that was. Um, the true leap in logic and in reality was done by the CEO of Sony in the 80s when he thought of Walkman. Right? And there was no research department figuring out if this is going to be a viable product. He needed something to uh, take on his flights to listen to, his operas and whatnot. He was into classical music uh, and he wanted a portable player, so he asked his engineer to make him one. And, you know, there was no, you know, is this going to work? They just released it to market. The day before Walkman was released, no one knew they needed a Walkman. The day after, everybody knew they needed a Walkman. You know? So he was solving his own pain. Um, and that's the best way to do it. The second best way is to talk to your customers. Talk to your target audience. And when I say you, I mean you, the person that sets the vision for the product, for the brand, for the company. Because if you have somebody else do it, it's like playing telephones when you're kids, right? There's so much fidelity lost by the time it trickles up. The information trickles up from the target audience to the people who are doing, I don't know, focus groups or whatever, to the agencies, to the management, to the CEO and vision setter, right? There's so much fidelity lost in that process, you, the person that's creating a vision, needs to talk to people. High touch. Get out there, shake some hands, kiss some babies. Yeah. How can you use this pain when creating content for your customers? It, it all goes back to uh, you have this product, it solves a real um, uh, need. Um, uh, you need to highlight uh, the solution. Um, People will often, there's a solution, but they don't know it. You have the solution, but they don't know it. Mm -hmm. uh, so now it's really the question of how do you get the word out, mm -hmm. right? Um, and obviously, if you're a business today, you want to exist online, you need a blog. And I'm going to plug Triber now. We've built Triber to help you get the word out, right? So you have a product, it's solving a need. The challenge is not really creating the content because you know, it writes itself, right? You explain what, uh, what it does, what pain it solves. But how do you get people to see it, yeah. right? And then to use it. Um, and, you know, Triber helps with that. Dino, you're the founder at Triber. Um, can you tell us more about it? Yeah, so Triber, we call it a blog amplification platform, but it's really, it's the only social network that's built from the ground up for content creators. Because we are content creators. I'm a, I'm a blogger. My uh, co-founder, Dan Christo, uh, he's a blogger. His sisters are bloggers. His mom's a blogger, right? Um, CEO takes for uh, CEO. SEO takes forever, you know, and big players in the space always have the upper hand. So how, do, how does someone who's not technical, how does someone who's just starting out get their blog noticed? That was the question that we needed to solve. So our mandate is to solve big problems for little bloggers. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and yeah, that's what Triber is about. It's really a social network for bloggers. Dino, you managed to build a large community around Triber. Uh, can you share your action plan with us? We don't have an action plan. Yeah, we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants, really, uh, if I'm honest about it. Um, there's few things that have come naturally to us um, because we are bloggers, we are content creators, right? So we just write about stuff that comes to our mind or people just force us to write because they keep asking the same question over and over again. So it's like, okay, fine, I'll answer it, right? You write a blog post about it. Um, but some of the best content that I feel that we've done, it's like, you know, it's like you ask a musician, what's your favorite song? It's never the hit, right? It's always like one of those obscure songs that they wrote 
on some obscure album that did nothing, right? Um, some of the best content I feel uh, that we've put out there has been around those core values, right? Uh, what is Triber about at, at its core? And then write about things that reflect those values, right? So, you know, if um, uh, solar panel block, right? That's one of my uh, clients. They, they're, they are a solar panel uh, company. Is there a topic more boring than that? I, I, don't, I don't think so, right? Um, so they don't write about solar panels. Who wants to sit there and read technical specs on solar panels, right? Um, but that's not what their blog is about. Their blog is about sustainability. Their blog is about um, the green movement, right? Their blog is about values that reflect what the product uh, represents, right? So I think go into those values. Figure out what those values are. And it's a, again, that's a deeply personal question, right? You have to answer for yourself. What are those values? And then share those values. And then people who share those values with you will, it'll resonate with them, right? And I think that's a great way to go about writing content. Dino, thank you for sharing with us. It was a very insightful interview. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. And thank you for watching written.com. Mm -hmm.